Major funding for Immortality Now was provided through an educational grant from Hotsi Vitamins. Founded in 1993 by Dr. Stephen F. Hotsi, Hotsi Vitamins is committed to delivering only the finest quality vitamins and supplements to meet your patient's needs. Now offering customized vitamin packs, Hotsi Vitamins is making it easier than ever for your patients to get well naturally. For more information, visit client.hotsivitamins.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Ron Klatz for Immortality Now. Today's episode is going to be on the topic of uh, nitric oxide, which is an exciting new area, an exciting new cell signaling factor in anti-aging regenerative uh, medicine. Today's guest is uh, Dr. Nathan Bryan from the Baylor College of Medicine in Texas. Thank you for being on the show. Thanks, Dr. Klatz. So tell us, um, what does uh, nitric oxide have to do with the diseases of aging? Well, my interest in nitric oxide goes back about 15 years, shortly after the Nobel Prize was awarded for the discovery of nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. So what we've learned over those 15 years and about 140,000 papers published on nitric oxide is there's an age-dependent loss of nitric oxide. Yes. And there's loss of nitric oxide is what's responsible for many age-related diseases from high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, um, many things that we get later in life after the age of 40. And just for our listeners and our viewers, explain what nitric oxide is. It's an intracellular... Sure, so it's an intracellular signaling molecule. Mm -hmm. So it's how cells in the body communicate with one another. But it's, it's a gas that's produced by the lining of our blood vessels, mm -hmm. these endothelial cells. And so when... This nitric oxide gas is produced, it activates a, a cascade of signaling events that causes blood vessels to relax and dilate. You can get increased perfusion to certain tissues, uh, normalized blood pressure. Um, it's, a central, it's a neurotransmitter in the central nervous system, and it's also how uh, the production of nitric oxide is how our immune system fights off uh, invading pathogens from bacteria to parasites to, to fungi. Okay. So it's really a critical molecule, and it's involved in every biological function uh, in the human body, and so this is a signaling. Uh, this is a signaling factor. This is very much like a hormone, and it drops with aging. Correct. So the the Nobel Prize was awarded specifically for its discovery as a signaling molecule in the cardiovascular system, and so we lose about ten to twelve percent of our nitric oxide production per decade. So when we're in the age range of forty or fifty years old, typically we only have about fifty percent of the nitric oxide we had when we were young, fiber, eighteen or twenty year old. So no wonder we can't do the things we did when we were younger, and no wonder uh, that so, we get age-related disease. So it affects blood flow, hemodynamics. Right. It affects blood pressure. Correct. It affects cardiovascular activity. It affects uh, mental activity or, or, or cognitive function. Sure. And, uh, explain that. How does it affect cognitive function? Well, there's two components on cognition, but the main thing we focused on is always the vascular control. So in, one could make an argument that the etiology of many diseases is due to ischemia or hypoxia or reduced blood flow to give sufficient oxygen and nutrients to those tissue beds. Mm -hmm. So when you take nitric oxide or restore the body's ability to make nitric oxide, you maintain the um, dynamics, the hemodynamics of the blood vessels, so you begin to perfuse those tissues. So, for instance, in, in vascular dementia, where it's shown to uh, be dementia caused by reduced blood flow to the prefrontal cortex. If you take nitric oxide, dilate the cerebral arteries, you improve cognition. You can actually show the improvement in uh, MRI studies and improvement perfusion of certain regions of the brain. Mm -hmm. So it's not just in, in the cerebral vascular bed. You know, it's what's responsible for sexual function, erections in men and women. So it's the dilation of the blood vessels, either in the penis or the clitoris, that allow the engorgement that, that uh, is responsible for. And that's what led to the Nobel Prize and the development of a certain blue pill? That's correct. So that's, these PD-5 inhibitors, the blue pill, work downstream of nitric oxide. So we know that if you can't make nitric oxide, then the little blue pill doesn't work for you. In fact, they've been out long enough to know that 50% of the men to which they're prescribed don't respond because they can't make nitric oxide to give those drugs a substrate to work on. So really, and but that's actually told us a lot too that the etiology of of erectile dysfunction and really all cardiovascular related diseases is insufficient nitric oxide production. Okay, and how about immunity? What does nitric oxide have to do specifically with maintaining or uh, with keeping immune levels uh, functioning 
at a high level as as in a younger younger individual. Sure. So there's a there's three isoforms of of an enzyme that makes nitric oxide. One's called an inducible nitric oxide synthase, and that's found primarily in macrophages, neutrophils, part of our immune system. So when our body sees an infection or a pathogen such as a bacteria, it will upregulate the expression of this enzyme and it creates really a lot of nitric oxide, probably about 10,000 to 100,000 times higher than what's constitutively produced within the lining of the blood vessel. But what that overexposure of nitric oxide does is binds to the iron sulfur centers of these bacteria, basically shuts down their cellular respiration. So it's a very important component of our um, immune system. So nitric oxide works directly uh, in regard to uh, immunity, and it works directly on uh, pathogens. So you're saying the nitric oxide can disable bacteria, viruses, fungi? It's, it's some parasites. So and most parasites. Yeah, most all pathogenic bacteria are sensitive to nitric oxide. Um, and so one can begin to appreciate a lot of diseases or symptoms that manifest as a result of the loss of the ability, the body's ability to make nitric oxide. So it's not just high blood pressure. It's not um, just vascular dementia. It can be immunocompromised uh, individuals because uh, you can elicit a robust response to infections or invading pathogens. So all of those three components really tell us how important nitric oxide is in the human body. And also nitric oxide is a, is a very strong, perhaps the strongest, uh, vasodilator for the coronary arteries? Absolutely. And there has been some work on using inhaled nitri is it nitrous oxide or nitric oxide? It's nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, thank you. Nitrous oxide laughing glass. That's right. Yes, that's what I have the most experience <laughs> with. <laughs> okay. yeah, the nitrous oxide will put you to sleep and nitric oxide wakes you up. Right? Okay. Anyway, the nitric oxide uh, has been looked at uh, for reversing or for inhibiting um, ischemia in both uh, kidney disease and also in cardiac disease, yes? Correct. And lately, nitric oxide has been, uh, uh, has been touted as a, uh, a sports performance enhancer. And I'm looking around at the health clubs and I see many products now that have, you know, one formula or another of natural substances, things such as beets, which right. are naturally high in uh, nitric, o nitric oxide. Nitric oxide fundamentally works not just on perfusion and increasing oxygen uh, delivery to working skeletal muscles for, for, for sports performance, but the adaptive effects of that occur at the level of the mitochondria. So what nitric oxide does to the mitochondria, it basically induces more mitochondria, but it also increases the efficiency of oxygen utilization. Mm -hmm. So you're making more ATP with the same amount of oxygen and you're basically pushing that uh, anaerobic threshold back. So it's not surprising that nitric oxide affects performance. Tell us about uh, your personal anti-aging program. Tell us about what you're trying to uh, accomplish uh, it, towards the goal of uh, uh, achieving uh, your own brand of immortality. Where do you see the uh, the, the, the big uh, the big wins in the future of medicine? Well, I think this whole concept of regenerative medicine and anti-aging medicine is certainly the future. I think stem cells are going to play a big role in that. Um, we published a paper several years ago showing that nitric oxide, production of nitric oxide is the signal that tells stem cells to mobilize and differentiate into repairing diseased tissue. So again, it comes back to if we lose our ability to make nitric oxide, then the stem cells don't do their job. So there's a reason older patients don't recover repair because they don't make sufficient nitric oxide to tell the stem cells to mobilize and differentiate. I think that's also the reason that older patients don't respond as well to stem cell therapies. And so we have a lot of uh, regenerative medicine docs who use our technology before they even give the stem cells back to the patient to open up the blood vessels, provide that nitric oxide signal, then the stem cell therapies actually work better. Well, thank you so much for uh, being with us here at Immortality Now, and uh, live long and well, and God bless. Thank you, Dr. Klatz. Immortality Now is made possible in part by Hotsey Vitamins, now offering customized vitamin packs. For more information, visit clients.hotseyvitamins.com.